What are we going to do for an intro? (laughs) Josh, we're going to get an intro made and then it's going to play now. That was a pretty good intro. Well done. Well done, Remy and Sam. Good job. This is a, the Captivating Attention podcast. How it are is. you, Josh? I'm good. Good. I'm, I'm rusty and I'm also good. Enough. Enough? Good. Yeah, emphasis on the enough part. Enough. Enough. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's been too long since our first episode. I was going to say our last episode, but our last was our, also our first. I might have had to get a sneaky watch of what we talked about last time, do you remember? <laughs> It's Correct. been that long. We were planning on doing this fortnightly and, oh, there, there you go. You've still got the sneaky oh, watch open. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. We just sit home and watch Hold ourselves. Hold my hand here the whole time. No, no. Um, it's been a few a few weeks longer and that's because, uh, you know, we run a business and, and things have taken over and that's uh, that's part of it. We're going to get more into that later on. Um, for those who are, are listening, watching for the first time, um, h- hello to you. And you can say hello if you like, Josh. I was just thinking poor people having to listen to us, but that's cool. They can, I mean, they can click stop. That's true. Yeah, it's their choice. They can click on one of those little videos on the side of YouTube if they're watching on YouTube and go and look at Don't do that. Sorry. That was <laughs> bad. <laughs> uh, you can't do that. You have to watch. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we, uh, we've we just started a business uh, recently about um, – Social media marketing, and that is what we talk about. We do this on the on the daily for another business that we were involved with, and we have now started our own. And this is uh, this is what this is all about. But we at the top of the show, one of the things we do also like to talk about and do is gin. So Remy, Remy's our producer. Hello, Remy. Hello. How are you going? Pretty good. How are good. you? Good, man. Good. Would you be kind enough to go and grab? Because it's almost Easter. In fact, it's Easter it's- tomorrow. This will be posted is. much later. Li- much if we keep Easter. this podcast going long enough, it'll turn into Easter. Easter it again. Probably could. So we'll post it again in a year. Uh, could you grab the gingerbread gin that should be just over right, here? I can so do like that. A gin liqueur, do- and then maybe a couple of ice blocks, and then we uh, we will we, we like gin. We like gin, so we should. Are we going the gingerbread gin, or wasn't there a hot cross bun gin? Oh yeah, hot cross bun. Sorry, that's what I meant. Hot cross bun gin. You're on yeah. the wrong shelf. On the wrong shelf. Uh, my my mistake. If we it's, were well planned out, we put a, would have put it on the one that was lit up. But you know. it was it was. Uh, this is a summary of the last couple of weeks. Uh, what, <laughs> Not what, very well planned. What out. life has been like. Uh, so here we are. This is our gin. We always do a shout out to uh, to where we get the gin from. And all right, I've got, a, I've got a glass here for me. I've got a glass here for you, Josh. Somewhere. And there you are. Ice block. There you go. One for Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we may have had a everywhere. pre-show gin. Uh, this is from Ichung Ichuga. Ichuga. Oh no, this is this, this, is, a this screw is going top. well. Yeah, this is going well. Let's uh, let's open this up and I'll move that one out of the way. In the oh wow, this is uh, need to uh, have better strength than I have. Don't give it to me then. <laughs> yeah, no, I got, I got problems here. There you go. You can do it. Great. You're actually you got stronger hands than I do. Let's see if that's true. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. See? This is a, uh, a hot cross bun gin liqueur. So I guess we don't mix this with anything. We just have it as it is. And, Should uh, just take, taste like a hot cross bun. Yeah, exactly right. We shall uh, we shall try it out as an Australian. No, we got to – do you call them ginneries? I don't know. Because we I have think, like an alcohol like expert here. Oh yeah. What what uh, do we call them? Ready, you can what do you call gin f- places? Distillery sounds so boring. Let's call them gineries. Cheers. Cheers. For, for, here's to Easter. Gin gin stillery? Gin stillery is all right. Gin gin anyway. That tastes That's, like hot cross buns. It's actually not that bad. Wow. <laughs> that is excellent. Oh, so anyway, that is our gin of the week. Or the I'm going to substitute that for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm drinking. I mean, and eating all week. Eating. That's exactly eating right. Eating a solid meal. Right. We need a business update. Last time we uh, we registered the business name. Yep. And got lunch. We did get lunch. That was the important bit. Uh, we have gone to the bank. Yes. Since. We did. And not heard from them since. Oh, yeah. I've emailed them as well. 
This is this is concerning. Look at look at these guys wanting business. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we won't name the bank yet, but um, we might soon. <laughs> if they, <laughs> they haven't got back to us by the next podcast, because I so this, I went to we went and sat down with them and talked about opening a bank account for this oh. new business, about uh, updating some bank accounts for my old business, and uh, and the second business we wanted to shift the bank accounts from another bank to them. Yeah. Maybe I'm rethinking that thought, but anyway. So we're going to give them a week. What well, would have been? By the next podcast, it would have been over a month. Yeah. 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 So probably just after this podcast. Yeah. Uh, and we also have uh, written our website. It is 80% done. There is stuff there. There is stuff there. It's not live yet. I'm having battles with getting the domains working. Um, oh. These these are all just those little, those little challenges that you, you're like, oh, we'll start a business. And then you're like, you know, okay, we get Gmail set up and then you go to your domain provider and you're like, all right, I'll hit the Gmail, add Gmail button and you do that and it puts all the, the data in and then you test it with Google and it's like, oh, it doesn't work. You're like, wait, you know, mix, uh, maximum should be up and running in an hour. Wait an hour, doesn't work. Wait the next day, doesn't work. All right, no worries. I'll go into the uh, the domain guys uh, chat. You know, they've been useful before, jumped on there. We're too busy, sorry. Helpful. Three Super day, helpful. Three days in a row. So uh, this mm. is uh, yeah, this is this is part of the fun. <laughs> this is all <laughs> part of the fun when you're also trying to uh, uh, trying to do other things. But business update is we haven't done a huge amount, although we did a in our in our other part of the business we did something very unique and interesting in the live streaming side of things. Um, yeah, which was yeah. A, a very good experiment. Remy, you were significantly part of that as well. I was, yep. Yeah, so uh, this was uh, this is a sporting event and we uh, went along and actually live streamed portions of it. We didn't do a full broadcast. We were not set up to do that, but we had uh, four cameras, Josh. Yeah, yeah, four cameras, um, one of them wireless and, yeah, a little media tent, which yeah. is very different to have. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So we, we went into the weekend with very, very open to whatever happens. Yeah. We, whether we, it went well, whether it didn't. From the sporting event side of things, we didn't advertise that it was happening. And so we basically just sort of on the low key, uh, I'm involved in that, in that event anyway. And so I had to be there and we thought, you know what, let's just go along and see what we can make work. And so uh, we didn't advertise it and tell anyone we were doing it apart from the yeah, the admin people who needed to people know. People needed to know. Basically, popped our tent up and started started doing it, and it worked. Uh, it worked better than we thought uh, yes, it was going it to. Definitely be. did. And uh, so we we would live stream. I think the the we live streamed a little bit on the Friday on the practice day on the setup day just to test it, and then we went out in the official channels on Saturday. Yes. Uh, we I think we kicked off with like an hour long stream to start with. We, we kicked off with a, probably the one of the more solid streams. Yeah, the longest stream. Yeah. yeah. Had a few technical issues in terms of audio dropping out at distance and this and that, but things that we were learning about. Yeah, was, was anticipating there would be some form of a learning curve. And the only thing that, that well, no, we'll get into the, the big letdown uh, at the end, but Remy, this was a, a unique thing for you to do. This is the first time you've done something like this. Definitely, yeah. 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 Tell us about a few of the like the challenges you encountered, some of the stuff you really liked, some of the stuff that went well. Yeah. So I guess the like the stuff I really liked was um, being hands-on with the camera, following you around. Um, that, I guess, was kind of easy to do, but um, just what I'm into. Live streaming was hard, getting on deck and pressing all the buttons to change the channels. That was quite uh, difficult because it was like my first time doing it, but, mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed that as well. Cause I learned a lot from it. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, just the whole experience as well, working with the team and communicating, um, was something good to learn as well. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, to clarify, I was the, I was the host of, in front of the camera for the, the sessions. Uh, Josh, you'd sort of been involved in, in setting up, but you then, uh, you, you actually, I think, I think you guys did really well yourself, Remy and, and Sam, who was also, and Raul, who was also involved, yep. uh, you guys shared the roles, running the camera, uh, running the vision mixer, uh, running support for, for either of those, um, uh, as well. It was very, yes, got, got spread along everyone. Yeah. Which is the goal to try and sort of boost people's, uh, uh, people's experience and there was no commitment made to the, the sporting event as to what we would achieve. It was purely very much an internal opportunity to, to play and we don't, we do live uh, live streams 
fortnightly out of out yeah, of here regularly. with the podcast, that sort of thing, but just having the dynamic of being in the field. And the biggest issue that I thought was going to uh, we were going to encounter was internet. Yep. The biggest issue we encountered was internet. <laughs> so <we laughs> funny did, how that works. Yeah, we did get that one right, but it was the type of thing we weren't we weren't paid to do it. We did it sort of off our own uh, des- desires to try and get better. And yep. so I, I, you know, we had checked all the gear that we had, and the one thing that I sort of pulled out of the cupboard, got, wiped the dust off, was a, a Wi-Fi hotspot that had a SIM card that we put into it. It was probably the one sort of oversight that we didn't didn't really consider. It just went, oh, we can just hotspot it and fine. And then to, it was the day be before fair, setting up, going, no, oh, to, we need Ethernet. To be fair, uh, it was not overlooked. I, I knew that that was there. I knew that we were probably going to have to run that. That was always yep. my plan. I overlooked it then. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'd already, that's why I didn't bring it up because I was with my plan. And in my mind, I just I made a decision not to go and buy something because we don't know when the next time we're going to do this is. Yeah. Not to go and buy something that we were going to use what we had. I knew it would work. And then I think the first issue we had was uh, was a power issue where it wasn't it wasn't plugged in. I yes. think you were running on battery and I didn't think it would run on battery. I didn't think anything battery to, left. To be fair, considering we didn't think it would run on battery, I think it lasted about an hour and a half. It's about an hour and a half longer than I thought it would last on. Exactly. And then and then I think we plugged into power but it wasn't drawing enough power or something. Yes, it was off like a tiny little charger brick thing. Yep. And and then it, and then it just – it actually died. It really didn't do very well. So um, the uh, – that's the – that, that was the the challenge. Um, however, one of the real benefits out of it, uh, one of the real the, the the big values, the live stream was good. There was lots of engagement, lots of questions, uh, and, and viewers and such. Uh, we didn't advertise it, so that certainly didn't have you know, it didn't have the numbers that we could have got had we told people we were doing it. Yes, so that was intentional. Considering it was the spur of the moment thing that we did and it just went up out of the blue on the pages. There was there was more engagement than I anticipated okay. there would be. Interesting. The, the Interesting. numbers that I saw I went, all right, like this is it's cool to see this many people jump on for something completely out of the blue. Absolutely. So it was good like that. But also then we have a, we've ended up with footage from the event that we were able to some of the live streams that like these little segments that sort of a pre interview and then someone doing this sport and then a, a post interview and that sort of thing uh, running through has uh you know, they will make their way, or they already have started to make their way out to socials. Yeah. Uh, and they uh you know, quite an interesting, well produced, you know, sort of good level sort of thing. So yeah, I think we got lots out of it. We certainly uh oh, definitely. We had our debrief today actually. Oh good. Where we sat down and went, All right, let's Is- let's just jump back a step, like, all right, what didn't work? And yep. then went, All right. We can fix this with this, this with this, and sort of broke down to go, right, next time we do this, these are the things we're going to do yeah, to nice. improve it. How did that go for you, Remy? Did you get lots out of out of doing that sort yeah, of Yeah, I reckon, thing? yeah. During, I think we just doubled over what we went over on the day <clears throat> and um, last week really. So on the day we knew what went wrong and what went well and we discussed it then and there. So I guess today was like clarifying definitely with each person what went well and what went wrong and like what we need for next time really. Okay. Yeah, we've we've got it all all down in notes. It's all it's all written and documented. So Brilliant. when when we get around to next time, it's not a question of all sitting down again going, "Oh, what do we talk about?" It's just like, <laughs> "All right, cool. Here's the list. This here is are, what we're doing. Here are the things to work on." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, I mean, it's super important. And that's one of the things I think I want to um, uh, impart to people. Like, you know, this was this was about two weeks out, and we were debating like because we we're always going to be involved in it, and you know. Previously, we'd taken cameras along, filmed and taken photos. Yep. And we could have done that again. That would probably have been the sensible thing to do, but we'd done it. It was the easy thing to do. We, we, could, we were going to do that anyway. And that's, you know, it didn't need three or four of us there to do that. We, one of us would have been fine. And we did, in amongst the live stream, we did manage oh, to. Oh, did all that. Yeah, we yeah. did all that anyway. Did all that. So uh, I set the, the challenge for these guys a couple of weeks out to say, right, let's live stream it and... The matter happened, so it was it was good. It was challenging. I think uh, one of the the lessons I want I want people to take away from that is sometimes you know you you just need to experiment and go out and just try it. And and the stakes were low in this instance, and yeah. we learnt lots. Now, if we needed to do it with stakes being higher, we would go into that with so much more confidence. We would spend some money on the areas that needed it. We would probably do some some practice runs, some dry. Oh, well, we did some practice runs, but in terms of like actually the the hosting side of things and the movement and a few things on those lines, yeah, um, we would do a little bit more in the in the practice side of things like that, and we would be 
pretty comfortable to do a fairly high level production. We got challenges. We've got a, we've got a, a date booked for uh, end of the year where we're going to do the finale of that uh, particular side of things, and uh, we've got some goals to achieve for that one. But that's all in good time. You guys don't know about that yet. It'll happen. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> hooray. Speaking of hooray, we should we should talk into uh, some of the commitments we made last time. Uh-oh. Yeah, how would your commitment to uh, run some stuff on uh, on Instagram? If I, if I had a scale of 1 to 10 of how well I did. Minus 5? I was thinking more minus 8. <laughs> <laughs> not, not brilliantly. Well, you can't, my, go, you can't go backwards. You just didn't do it. Yeah. So just flat zero. Just flat zero. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my commitment was to research and start posting some Instagram carousels. Right. To which yep. I did None. zero research and zero carousels. Okay. Yep. And my commitment was to make some decisions on one of the, the one of the YouTube channels we run to see if there's some direction. And uh, I had given it plenty of thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was the extent was, of I've it. heard none of that thought. Correct. I have not communicated the thought well. And look, let's let's uh, let's start um, – we can we can come up with heaps of excuses and we will give us a moment, but uh, I've already got like thankful. <laughs> Let me pull out my notes. However, however, the 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 excuse is that we got busy. We had someone away with a car accident, which then turned into COVID. We had someone away for their wedding, and then another guy into emergency surgery, and so we uh we ended up with some very challenging times in terms of time frame. We had the event that we decided to live stream, and et cetera, et cetera. These are all excuses and that sort of thing. Business gets busy. Those who are watching are in business will know those weeks, happens. months, lifetimes happen uh, when things are busy and you just you just don't get to what you were intending, particularly when it's the non-essential, doesn't have to happen, it's the nice to haves, right? Yes. However, one of the things that I have previously had when my, – so the way my business used to work, and this is running online stores, is that I would be quiet so I'd make heaps of content. And I'd put I'd put post up every day, and I'd do all the things that you meant to do. And then because I did all of that, I would get busy, yep. and I'd make more sales, and have more orders to pack, and more phone calls to follow up on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And during that time, I wouldn't make any content. Yes, yeah, you run out of time, and so you just let that drop because you know life and work yep. and things. And then we'd go quiet again because mm-hmm. we weren't marketing. We'd and that gives you heaps of time to create new content and then the cycle repeats. <laughs> You're exactly right. And that, and that is effectively you, you could ebb and flow my business with, with when we did well to when we were quiet to when we created more content. Yeah. It's funny how they correlate. They go together. Yeah. yeah. And, and so uh, what happened in this, you know, we've obviously moved on a little bit, but one of the, one of the things that we uh, have been big on is we bank a lot more content than we post. Yes. We, we put a lot of stuff where, all right, that's cool. We'll just we'll sit there, there and we can draw on it when we need to. We'll, we'll keep posting up but we're always trying to grab a little bit more, a little bit more. And when you have a three weeks like we have just had where a lot of unexpected things happening and we didn't quite get to what we wanted to do, the, the, the big benefit is that content has still gone out for our key brands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the consistency has stayed. In fact, we've had the level that it was. If some, not, we've gone some blown up. Yes. We've had one of our TikToks uh, was this was only started a few weeks ago. It yeah. is now our biggest TikTok within our collection of brands uh, by a long way. Um, <laughs> yeah, massively, <laughs> massively. So uh, the, the the content has has remained. The business has remained. We have still we are, we're in a record month. We just came off a record month, sorry, and we are on track f- to match that month uh, at present. So the, 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 well, these are exciting things. Yeah, these are exciting things. And so I think that uh, we can give all the excuses for why we didn't get our commitments done. However, uh, we've, um, uh, we, we have been in a good position where we've been able to set the business up that we have the ability to, to bank content. One of the things is uh, last weekend or last week, sometime you yeah, went off to the F- you went off to the F ones. I did, and two things we want to talk about that one is how good some F one teams are and uh, at marketing. Yeah. Yes, they're phenomenal at marketing. <laughs> but anyway, we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, and so the the thing was like I remember you you were here Wednesday or something on those lines, and you turned around, you looked at me, and you're like, right, content is banked for every channel till Tuesday when I get back. 
Yeah. Right. Covered me the whole time I was gone. That's exactly right. Basically, you didn't have to pick up a phone, didn't have to look at anything. It was all done. Yep. And that is a really comfortable position to be in you know, well, well and truly a week ahead. And this is across three or four brands. So, yep. um, uh, yeah, that was that was a nice position to be in. Uh, and, yeah, you were able to go away and enjoy that. Um, it was it was nice actually to be able to go away and enjoy that. So I've, I've previously gotten scheduled a, a bit in and then gotten to one day and gone, oh, I forgot that one. <laughs> and then just last minute, like quick on the phone, going through Lightroom. All right, ah, uh, that's good enough. All right, cool. Now I'm good. Yeah. But to be able to just properly go, I don't have to think about yeah, anything until I get back. Mm. Mm, it was good. So uh, that was a uh, yeah and in amongst that crazy busy period to actually still have enough content to be able to draw on and, and set it all up and do all that sort of thing and have those go through. And some of them, you know, trended really, really well, got really good responses, lots of comments, all that sort of stuff, uh, which was uh, which was excellent to see. Yeah. So uh, done done well. Formula Ones. Yes. For, for those who perhaps don't know us, uh, we are quite keen. What are you looking at? Of just my my secret scattering of oh, yeah. Formula One cars in yeah, the background. Maybe some Formula One content some sitting in the little back. Easter egg things. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, so we are quite into our Formula Ones, and we went across to Melbourne. I kept delaying my flights, and you, Josh, you drove. I just committed and just went because <laughs> there was a few <laughs> uh, few challenges here with uh, with you know keeping keeping things rolling with the various challenges. But I went over on the Saturday morning, and we went to Formula One. Did you enjoy it? That's the worst time to try and take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. You loved it. It, it was awesome. Yeah. It's definitely a very different experience. Is that your first Formula One? It was my first F1. Person? Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, I've done other motorsports but not okay. F1. There you go. Yeah. Right. The glitz and glamour of it's, that is Formula One. Yes. Okay. Well, from the outside. From the outside, not, not the accommodation. Pit, pit side lane is my goal pit next lane. time. Okay. Pit lane. All right. We were on the sh- we'll first see. chicane, the first t- turn one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sweet. And so you know, we could get into Formula One, talk all about that, and this could come This could turn into an F1 podcast exactly very right. quickly. However, it won't yet. Oh. <laughs> um, but one of the things that, that Formula One brands do, and one of the things that, that I've seen trend, so I used to be into Formula One from about 2009, two, no, 2010, through to about 2014, where it was free to wear, Mark Webber was a big deal, yeah. Red Bull. Was, there was the Aussie doing well. Correct. And so, good times. And I, I went and watched it when I was in the UK and went, like, oh, this is great. I really enjoy this, and uh, and away we went. And then I, you know, I, I was out of it because it dropped off free to wear here in Australia, and so you might yes. like might be three races a year, and yeah. you'd get like two or three big ones, and then yeah. just another sprinkled in. Yeah. It wasn't great, barely anything, and I, I couldn't afford to, to pay for it. And then earlier this uh, this no last year, I was in quarantine, and Josh was really into Formula Ones, and so I signed up to the to the subscription thing. Oh, and uh, have been uh, into it ever since. Hooked ever since. But one of the things that I, I've really noticed is their their social media focus. Now, this is not uncommon for, you know, big companies, but I think the, the Formula 1 brands, many of them do it extremely well. They've hired the right people. Yeah. They, they have, you know, you see, the, you see the traditional vlogger Casey Neissat set up running around the pits, you know, with, the, with a, a Canon or a Sony or something like that with a road mic on top and, uh, and it's the, the, the traditional sort of videographer sort of, feel about yeah. it and they make some great stuff they do yeah and there's, and there's the thing i like there is actually there's quite a lot of variety in the different is. teams so some teams would go sort of down one sort of path and then you look at another team and you go oh that was different i like that mm. one of the things i think that a few of the teams oh, so who do you who do you follow on the teams side of things i think i follow all of them now okay, all of I, them. I follow all of them but there is obviously there's the standout ones okay who's so the standout got, for you for me, it's McLaren. Okay. Yep. McLaren is my standout and might be biased. I like McLaren. Ricardo's there. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Then other than that, Mercedes does a really good job. Mm-hmm. I like Mercedes. There's, I used to like Red Bulls more than what they do now. Interesting. Which is interesting. Yeah. Okay. I feel like they've dropped off a little bit or I've changed the platforms that I'm watching on. Okay. Unsure about that one. So this, is, this is one thing that I wanted to bring up because I only really follow the Formula One teams on uh, on TikTok. Yep. I follow some of the drivers on Instagram. Oh, yes. All right. And I don't really do much on Facebook personally. What? What page? <laughs> oh. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, on TikTok, I get the sense that the guys driving the TikToks are younger 
and understand TikTok and play into the games a lot more. And they spend many an hour on TikTok. And I don't, yeah, they, they, they're up to speed with the trends and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, particularly Mercedes, McLaren, um, uh, Aston Martin. Yep, do, Aston is one in there. Quite well there. Uh, Haas a little bit. Um, not Red Bull. No. A Red Bull t- on TikTok? Now I've got to ask the question. Yes, they are. I believe they are on TikTok. Just, they they just, just don't do it. And well. I think I think we see that we see that with Red Bull quite across the board. Like I like I like with the team Red Bull. Obviously, back in 2010, that was the team I was I was following. Yep. Uh, and so, Red Bull have um, they have a serious nature to them. Uh, they have a real sort of traditional F1 feel about them. See that that's where I would almost sort of. I would agree now. Mm. If you'd have said that to me a few years ago, I would have disagreed. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Which I think has to do with the people, the personalities that the drivers have. Sure. Because I used to follow them when Ricardo was there and (laughs) the banter between Ricardo and Verstappen was brilliant. Like it still gets pulled up now on TikTok from just other fan pages and you look at it and go, yes, this is brilliant. Yeah. But I feel they don't have those personalities to drive the channels now. So okay. for me, they've sort of they've dropped off. Whereas before, I mean, it was on Instagram because TikTok wasn't a thing when I was following them Understand. properly. Yep, it was, and you, I would always see the stuff pop up because they, you know, Red Bull can do some crazy and wonderful things because they obviously have the money for it. Mm. But you'd watch Verstappen and Ricardo going. I don't know what, they'd get little fruits and just their personalities, it would just be entertaining to watch them try these fruits. And so there was obviously like a place for that. And then I feel like, yeah, the, the fun sort of personality of Ricardo and Verstappen is, is separated. They're not there and it's turned, yeah, a bit, bit more serious now. See, I, I wonder, because obviously Red Bull in the last couple of years have really been pushing to challenge for the world championship. Yes. Of things. And I wonder whether or not they've consciously made – Personality thing aside, they've consciously made a focus on being a little bit more, a little bit more uh, upper class, a little bit more professional, a little bit more sort of like, no, we're a serious team. Yes. Which is interesting because Mercedes are that. However, they quite happily, not so much Lewis, but certainly when Bottas was there, much happier to play the, play, you know, play yeah. the fun card and, and, and really lean into the TikTok side of things. Now, I have noticed at the start of this year they've not as much with Russell, but, but okay. they have got the Russell on board with you see the trends and you see the things mm, and okay. it's still there. Yeah, okay. So that's where I find it interesting with Red Bull because Ferrari mm-hmm. have never really been that, I guess, fun, happy, laughy team. No. They are that more serious path. Yeah. And that, that shows very much in their socials. Yes, it's it very much comes across as like we we are here for one thing and we we're f- here to we're, win. <laughs> we're Ferrari, yeah. Yes, yeah. I think I think you're right, and I don't I don't know if I follow Ferrari on anything actually because I probably haven't found them very engaging. Yeah, uh, for that reason, I'd be interested. To, I think that they've got they've got loyalty. Like Ferrari is an amazing brand that they they have loyalty within F1 and outside of that. What it's interesting is that the Red Bull is usually right on the cutting edge of everything, you know, and they, they, yes. they're they a bigger brand outside of Formula One um, or outside of Red Bull Racing in general is is extreme sports and all this sort of thing. Everything and anything. Yeah, and I, I just I, – I think that they um, they don't they don't sort of take the piss out of themselves enough. Um, yes. Perhaps more in Australia, maybe that's more of an us thing, but – uh, yeah, you see, you certainly see that in the, in the other F1 teams more. Mm. Yeah, very much so. But they do it well. They do it well. There's some, some brands out there that, you know, we, we follow that, um, you know, McLaren, Aston and, and Mercedes that we can, there's lots to be learned from, from, you know, if you're trying to establish, um, well, it depends on the feel of your brand as well. It's not to say that Red Bull and Ferrari are doing the wrong thing by any stretch. Yes. Um, oh, they still, you follow them on anything and they are huge. Yeah, they are huge, but they also portray a very different feel. And that's, that's important to, to know what your brand is and to know how your brand communi- can communicate. But there's also, there's also the element where there's stuff from say McLaren that they'll put on TikTok that they won't put on Insta or, the, or they won't put on Facebook yeah. or YouTube. And I think that, that, that is really good awareness of, of knowing your medium of, of what TikTok does really, really well. And then, and then your different, your different social platforms, how they work extremely well. 
Um, but I think they McLaren's probably a really good example. Shame that they're perhaps engineer side of things is uh, an injury come it's along. An but they uh they do that and they do they do have um you brought up before they do have really good personalities to play with with Lando and, and Daniel. Uh they are excellent excellent people to have in front of camera. Yes. Um obviously both very comfortable with it. Uh, and Lando has been a, a Twitch streamer for many years and, and run YouTube channels and stuff. Uh, and the, I think Formula One in general do YouTube quite well. They, they have upped their game yeah. in the past few years, yeah, which has been good to see. Liberty Media have taken over. They have done. Um, they have done that. Did something just turn off? Did I, think your, it, I think it did. Your laptop. No, I, I think it was the little light oh, lighting okay. up the Ferrari. Oh, the red light for Ferrari. So we've moved on from Ferrari discussions. That's yep. why. Turn that one off. There Whatever. We go. Get rid of it. Um, and so. Yeah, I think that they do like the race highlights and all that sort of thing, which is, you know, the useful, interesting, you know, you watch for, you know, when you missed FP3 and you want to watch what happened, you get the 10 You just want the summary. Yeah, that's it. it. They're, they're great. But they also like they, they, they leverage the personality of their drivers a lot. Yeah. Um, be it someone like Ricardo who is out there and loud and all that sort of gear or someone like Kimi Räikkönen who is um, not. Uh, <laughs> and they, they are able to leverage those personalities in their, you know, they, they get the drivers to like – Try and remember who the last, how many championships or champions were, and or they go out and play basketball with one of the you know, couple of the guys from various teams, and I think they they do that well. They build on their, their drivers' brands extremely well. Yeah, they they have a, a very good media team behind them, mm. and even um, jumping into some of their like behind the scenes kind of stuff. Yep, I, b- I believe it was from F one that showed the workings of the start of a race from a media perspective of yeah, right. how do you make that work. Mm. Just, you know, with a team of thousands of people with thousands of video inputs and everything of the practical yeah. nature of, all right, this is how we cut from start of the race to this spot, to this, to this. And you look at it and go, whoa. That's a live streaming to a whole different world. Yeah. There is one other thing I wanted to bring up on F1 before we wrap up uh, was uh, you got a bit of a, uh, did you get a like on one of your photos from a, a particular person that you tagged in it? I, I didn't get a like, uh, not on the photos, but from the photos that I guess I'd sent or tagged tagged them in, yeah, like oh, yeah, a story. That's, that's what yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's a gentleman by the name of Kim Ilman who is a, a now an F1 official photographer, uh, but he's built businesses previously, and it, from from the outside looking in, looks like he's built his businesses and done extremely well, and has now followed a passion. Yeah. To go and travel the world following the He now has ones. the means to do exactly what he wants. And and take photos and, you know, make a business out of doing that. Uh, but he does his he does YouTube and he's built himself quite quite a reputation. And uh, he is uh, he is makes such clean videos, has such amazing photos that he is very well he brands himself and markets himself extremely well. Yeah. And he is if you even if you're not into Formula One, it would be worth checking out Kim's YouTube channel probably to start with. He, yeah. Because I think he covers all bases off there. And uh, and you happened to snap a photo of him. I did. Yeah. I, I, I guess I follow him on everything at the moment mm-hmm. and happened to scroll through Instagram that day and went, oh, he's going to be at, I think it was turn one, two, and three. Yep. We were on or turn one. the Grand Prix. Yep. Yep. And so start of the race, I was like, surely he'd be turn one for the start of the race. So yeah, that's stalker me, punched the camera in as far as I could go, looked up, looked at one stand to the left and I was like, oh, someone with a boonie hat. And I was like, took the picture, zoomed in. And I was like, no, nah, that's not Kim. That's not Kim. And then like <laughs> just before the race, probably like a minute or two, looked up and I was like, that's Kim. Yeah. And then took the photo, tagged him in it later, and sure enough, got a got a couple of likes on the things I tagged throughout the weekend. Ah, oh, fantastic. Now that's, that's good. So congratulations on your uh, – Minor claim to shout out fame. Yeah, my stalking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was good. It was good fun for for those in form. We might even keep an eye on the Formula One um, uh, channels, the the various channels from the various things, and just see who's who's doing what and what's what's engaging. Well. Save some notable things. Absolutely, but they are even if you're not hugely into Formula Ones, definitely worth checking out a few of those channels that we've talked about because they. You could you could take some of those same things that they do with their interviews with their drivers or their interviews uh, or their breakdowns or ex- all these sort of things. There, there is lessons to be learned from how they approach their marketing. Absolutely, and those guys have pretty significant budgets for those sort of things and and glamorous you know a glamorous thing to show. Don't be fooled by that though. You the, the same concept can work in a much lower key sort of environment. So yeah. definitely worth. I think I think Kim Ilman does that extremely well when it's just it's him. Uh, but he leverages the things that he's connected to to build quite a significant – I mean, he's talented as well, but to build quite a significant audience.
things. Yeah. Well, I, I know that I have in, in our media work that we've done, have seen some stuff from teams and gone, oh, I yeah. like that. And then just taken that and adapted it to what we do. And yep. some of them have done quite well. Absolutely. It's, it's good to do. So I'm going to ask you, Josh, we failed on our last commitments. So what is going to be your commitment? Now, I can tell you now, we're not going to record another episode in two weeks. Our next episode is going to be in a month. So you've got a yes. bit more time up your sleeve yes. because we've got another event coming up in two weeks that we'll be away for. So what is your commitment going to be? I should have been prepared for this. You should have been. I've, yeah, I don't know why I wasn't. You're written up on the whiteboard. Yeah, I know. Don't you worry. I... I'm not prepared either. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, commitment. Yeah. Something you're going to do between now and then that's going to uh, be a learning opportunity for you. Um, oh, we talked about it today, actually. Yes. We did. We, you did. I was Well, <laughs> I can't remember who I, I talked to someone about it today. Yeah. Yeah. Can't remember who now. Good. Um, about, cause we have for a couple of brands, um, like quick little informational things. Informative. Informative. I get that wrong every time. Look at me go. Quick little informative thing. You say infor- informational enough, it'll become a word. It will. I'll make it a word. Perfect. I'll do it. Love your commitment. Good commitment. <laughs> so by That's my commitment, in making month. informational a word. Everyone's going to know. <laughs> is it a word? I don't think it's a word. Is it no, a word? it's not. I've, it's, okay, I've, you've, you've I've looked, looked it up, it up yeah, before and then gone, you, you were an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Informative videos that you have. Yes. Yep. About because we of, we have some brands that deal with um, stuff that is very uh-huh. rich in information, correct. And some of that can be delved out in really really long form, mm-hmm. or you could just pick one little aspect and go, all right, here's just a quick little gem on that, yep. and then done and dusted. Okay. So that's one thing I wanted to do across two of the brands is get get a list of things, have a sort of filming session, and just get thirty second quick little. Just, I guess, little nuggets to go. This is this part of it in a nutshell. But then follow that up with you know, your nice your nice videos that just the yeah, ASMR, whatever it is, and cool. And sort of link them together and put them out and see see if you can get them to sort of bounce off of each other. So you're, you're talking about sort of two or three videos that are linked in theme. Yes. But very different in approach. Yep. Yep. So okay. one is your, you visually look at it and you go... Oh, this is cool. Yeah. And then the other is it catches your eye and you look at it, but the, the information that you get from it, <laughs> yes. I phrase that very specifically. Well done. The information you get from it, you go, Oh, I'm gonna try that. Like that was yeah, I liked that. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And and so you're gonna do this across two brands? Two brands. How many times? Well, the goal would be to do it. Once per brand. That's what you're going for, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, once okay. per brand every day. <laughs> so, oh, every day? The every day was in my mind, but I'm going to change that to every two days. Wow. That's All probably right. the cop out. That's just that's just upped it for a month. I had it's a month, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just, just yeah, every two days. <laughs> every two days, maybe. Every, every two days. Okay. All right. We'll see. I, I don't have faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if we make it more realistic, right? So over the next month, you're going to achieve that that sort of themed post. I think seven. achieving that by the end of it because it's all, that takes some planning to get to let's, that point. There's probably two weeks of planning. No, no, no. Let's put a number on. You're going okay. to achieve having having five themed post series per brand yep. in the next month. Right? So that's, that's probably prob- more achievable. That's probably going to be about 20 posts across those two brands. Yeah. Yeah, rather than every yep. day or every second day because you're talking yeah. like two or three videos per theme. So let's do it five times per brand. Yeah, that's that, that, seems that sounds better because you got other posts you need in there and other bits and pieces. So. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, great. Write that one down, Remy. Right, my commitment to don't write it. Down. I watched you. You didn't have a pen <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> we'll ask him next week. Yeah, we'll quiz that on Tuesday. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, uh, my my commitment. So my commitment is going to be around our socials for. Uh, another brand that we work with loosely. And I have been the sole uh, supplier of uh, content for that and failed miserably. Now, let's clarify. Don't get paid for it. Choose to do it. Uh, so, but I, I, you know, that should be no excuse. I uh, I need to do it. So here is my commitment. So in about a month, to, uh, sorry, in two weeks' time, we have the the next event involved in that brand. 
So from now until that event, mm-hmm. uh, I will have posted that's what, two weeks away, so 14 yes. days. All right, starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, not now. Uh, I will have posted, uh, let's say, 28 times. Two Ooh, a day. Going two a day. Now we have two channels on there. We have Instagram and Facebook for that particular brand. Yep. So I'm talking two on both yep. per day. All right. So that is a total of 28 times two, which you can do very quickly, I'm sure. No, you can't. Okay. One now? 56. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 56 times between now and the Friday of that event. Yeah. Now we, we like over the, like we probably post like, 15, 20 times over the two days of the event. So yes. yeah, uh, yeah. that doesn't count. In the, in the lead up to that. In the to lead that. up to. Yeah. All right. So that is my, that is my I, commitment. 56 posts. Yeah. I guess, I guess knowing about some of the stuff that's sitting there for that, that's, yeah, there's that, lots that's there. very in the realm of achievable. But you also know that uh, the, planning social posts is your, is your day to day. It is not my day to day. It's going to have to become my day to day for a, a period of time. So. That's amazing how much time you can lose. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, that is my goal uh, to do that. And uh, Does that mean I'm going to get roped in and have to like have stuff ready for it too? You're doing 48 of them. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, guys, thank you for watching. We're out thank completely out much. of hot cross gin. Yeah. Hot I've cross gin. I'm going to melted ice. top up. Remy, right. thank you as always. Thank you. Cheers. And uh, cool. we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers.